All right, so let's take a look at working a linear programming problem in Google Sheets. All right, so it says Fund A sells at $30 a share and has a three-year average annual return of $3 per share. And the risk measure of standard deviation is 17.5. And Fund B sells at $40 a share and has a three-year average annual return of $8 a share. The risk measure of standard deviation is 13.6. It says Sally wants to spend no more than 6500 investing in these two funds, but, but she wants to obtain at least $700 in annual revenue. Okay. Sally also wants to minimize her risk. Determine how many shares of stock Sally should buy. All right. So first we need to figure out, well, what are we going to minimize or maximize in this case, minimize. So we want to minimize the risk. So you can see the risk for fund A is the 17.5 and the risk for fund B is 13.6. Well, we want to minimize that. All right. So A is going to be the number of share, uh, the number of shares of fund A and we're going to, our variable B is going to be the number of shares of fund B. All right. So I've got Z is 17.5 times A plus 13.6 times B. And Z is our standard deviation. All right. Now our constraints. Okay. So we've got. We don't want, we, we want to spend no more than $6,500 on the two funds. Okay. Well, it's $30 a share for A and $40 a share for fund B. So the 30A plus 40B, we want that to be less than or equal to 7,500. But we also want to obtain at least $700 in annual revenue. Well, you can see up here, fund A, it says the annual return is $3 per share. Okay, that's on a three, as a three-year average annual return. And then for fund B, it's $8 a share. So 3A plus 8B, we want that to be greater than or equal to the 700. And then, of course, we, you know, we, we can't purchase a negative number of stocks. So A and B, they need to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. So now that we have our, the function we want to minimize and we have our constraints written down, uh, now we need to set up the, our sheet so that we can use the linear program, the solver and, uh, Google Sheets to solve this for us. All right. So there's my variables A and B. All right. So so what we have to do is we're we're putting our our function that we want to maximize or minimize in this case minimize. We, we want to put that in here. Okay? And I, I'm going to go ahead and enter this in and then I'm going to explain to you how it works. Well, this right here, this is this is our variables A, B, and this is going to apply to all this down here. Okay, so the coefficient of A in the in the function I want to minimize is seventeen point five. Okay, and then the coefficient of B is the thirteen point six. Okay, and, li and like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain all this of what I, what's going on. Well, let me just finish filling these three cells out here. Okay, so now my solution, I'm not going to put anything in there. I'm going to leave that blank. Okay, and so I'm going to, let's see, let's go ahead and just make that yellow. Okay, to know I'm going to use those cells. And then here for Z, we're going to put a formula in here. Okay. And, and what the formula is going to do is it's going to, it's going to evaluate this. Okay. So, so 
let me just real quick tell you what's, what solver is going to do. So solver is going to change the values of these cells. Okay. It's going to do it. It'll do it in the background. You won't be able to see it, but it's going to change the value of these cells. Well, as it changes the values of these cells, I need it to calculate what this function here equals. Okay. So how can I do that? Well, to, to calculate this function, I need 17.5 times A plus 13.6 times B. Okay, so I got to do this times this plus this times this. Now the way I'm, so in other words, I'm going to need to do this cell right here times this cell plus this cell times this cell. All right, so what function is going to do that? Well, that's going to be the sum product function. Okay, so what it does, or let me just go ahead and enter it in. So I'm going to select these two, comma, and then I'll select this one and hit enter. Okay, and, and let me go ahead and change the color of that cell too. So, all right, so, so let me explain to you what this is doing. So the sum product, what it does is like, see how I highlighted this row here, which is the B1 to C13, and then I highlighted the B14 to C14. Okay. So what it does is it takes the corresponding elements in each of these rows, multiplies them together, and adds the result. So it's going to do the B13 times B14, and then plus the, the C13 times C14, and it'll add them up. Okay, that's how the sum product works. And, you know, if you had three variables, you would just, you know, highlight those three, you know, highlight these three, and then these three, and it would do it. Okay. All right, so so that's that one. Okay, so it's got to calculate all that. And now I need to do my constraints. Okay, so let me pull that up a little bit. So, so now we got to do the constraints. Well, we need the constraints to calculate also. Okay. So, well, what do I need? Okay. Well, the constraints is the 30 a, see, I'm going to be in the a column and then plus the 40 B I'm going to be in the B column. So I've got 30, whoop, I've got 30 and then the 40. Okay. And now just for, you know, so I'll know what's going on. I'm going to put in the less than or equal to. Okay. And that less than or equal to, it's not going to be involved in the calculations in solver. I mean, it will, but I'll select the less than or equal to in the solver. I won't select this one. This is just more for, you know, so I'll know what's going on. And then we've got the three a plus eight B. Okay. And that is greater than or equal to 700. Okay. And whoop, I forgot to put in the 6,500 up here. Okay. All right. So see for this one, the 30, 40, and 65, 30, 40, and 6,500. Okay. And now a is greater than or equal to zero. Well, see, this is the A column. So what's the coefficient of A? It's one. Okay. Now notice there's no B. So I can either leave it blank or I can put a zero. It doesn't matter. I'll just, I'll just leave it blank. That's greater than or equal to and the zero. And then I've got B. Well, there's no A. So I can either put a zero or leave it blank. We'll leave it blank for the A column. And then the coefficient of B is one, and that's going to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. All right. So now I need, I need to do the same thing with these values as I did with this up here. See how I'm, I've ha I have this cell here calculating this right here. Okay. It's going to be changing these values here. And calculate. Well, I need it to do the same thing down here. So I need to do 30 times A plus 40 times B and 3A 
plus 8B. And then, of course, well, you got the A and the B. All right, so, so what we're going to do is see, I'm going to come here, and I'm going to do this calculation, this right here, the 30 times A plus 40 times B, and I'm going to put that result here. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do once again sum product. Okay, and I'm going to select this comma, and then I'll select this because those are the cells that are changing. Okay, and of course right now it's zero. Now I can enter that formula in again here, or what I can do is I can copy this down, but let me show you something. If you copy this down, notice how this changes. See, here it was B14, C14, and here it's B15, C15. Well, I don't need those ch those cells to change, okay? And see how this is B17 to C17, this row, and then this changes to row 18, this. I want that to change, but I don't want the to see this over here to change. So what we can do is once we put that in is I can put the you put the dollar sign and it and it keeps it fixed. All right, hit enter. And so then I copy this down and so I've got it. So that's um, you can see that see that remains the same but this over here changes and that's what we want. So that takes care of all that. And then I need the right side of the inequalities. So I'm just gonna hit equals and I'm gonna click that cell. That's what I want it to equal. And then I can just copy this down. And so there's that. All right, so now I have everything set up. And so now we can do the solver. So for solver, I've already got it here but you can hit get add-ons and just come in here and type solver and hit enter and so you can see there's there's this solver and this open solver i actually put this one um tried this one i couldn't get it to work you know maybe you can i don't know and so then I went to this one. I got it to work. I mean, I can see that the the average rating on them is not that good, but you know, I don't know it. It solves it, so I guess it'd be okay. Uh, so anyway, so once you solve for that, it it'll pop up here on the add-ons, and just come over here and hit start. All right. So now what we do is we've got a fill this out. All right, so here I, I found best with this one. If you click in the cell and then click into here, it it works better. Okay. So I want it to that's my objective cell, which is the 15. I want that to be minimized as small as possible. Okay. And I don't want it a max, I'll just like I just said, a min. All right. Now, by changing. Now, this is what I was talking about. This right here, This is these are the cells that are going to change. So what I would do is I would whoop, highlight them like that and then click in here. And it, it fills it out better, I think. Okay. And now we need to do the constraints. Okay. So let's add subject to okay all right so now let's come over here and we've got whoop i'm sorry we've got this the left hand side okay see this is what i was talking about left hand side and then here's the inequality this less than or equal to in this case and then the right hand side that's what we're filling out okay so, like I said, click in here, and then here, and it'll fill it out. And then I would click in here, and click there. Okay. And this is less than or equal to, so that won't change. And then I'm just going to hit Add. 
And so it adds it. I know you can't see it, but it, it did. All right, so then click here, left-hand side, and then this is going to be what? Let's go to the right-hand side, click in here, and there's that. But notice this is greater than or equal to. See, that's why I put these so I could, so you can see what's going on. So that's greater than or equal to. And then we add it. All right. And then, let's see, we've got the left-hand side. So then I'll click there. Okay. And then the right-hand side. And then click in there. And then this is going to be greater than or equal to, and then click here. Whoop, I'm sorry. See, did it still keep it B25? Yeah. So let's add. Forgot to add it. All right, now this one, left hand side, let's do the greater than or equal to, and then right hand side, and then we can hit OK. And let's see what it does. Hit it again. All right. So, so there they are. Okay, so here's my, let's see, is that, let me see something. Okay, so evidently it added this one twice. Yeah, I think I hit add and then I hit OK, so it added it twice. On the last one, you don't have to hit add. You can just, uh, you can just hit OK, but you know you can delete it. Okay, now with with this one, I mean I've got everything set up now, so all I need to do now is just come over here and hit Solve. Okay, so I hit Solve, and it's it's running. And let's hope it works. So it worked the first time I did it. So, okay, so it found a solution. And there it is. So, zero of stock A and 87.5 of fund B. Hope the video helped. Uh, check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.